Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, August 22nd. We still have a lot of activity in the Atlantic, but some storms are starting to drop off the map. Uh, we had a new one form yesterday, Tropical Storm Herald, which is now moving quickly inland over South Texas. We still have Tropical Storm Franklin over the Central Caribbean. Uh, Gert dissipated near the Leeward Islands as we expected. Uh, Emily dissipated over the Central Atlantic, and we have another wave behind the remnants of Emily, which did have a chance of developing, but isn't looking so organized right now, but is not a threat to land either way. We're going to briefly touch on Tropical Storm Herald, which we've been talking about for a couple of days. Uh, the disturbance tracked across the Gulf and did develop as expected, moving west-northwest towards South Texas. We saw a quick wrap-up of the circulation just before landfall, which we talked about being a risk with a tiny fist of strong wind being a possibility if this uh, got together right before landfall. And indeed, that did happen. Uh, this is the National Weather Service radar image showing a curved band, which uh, earlier had a bit of a hook shape all the way around the south side just before crossing Padre Island into South Texas. These red numbers here are maximum wind gusts in miles per hour from the last few hours. Corpus Christi has seen gusts in excess of 60 miles per hour in this primary band to the north of Herald Center as this comes ashore. And we've seen a lot of heavy rain now for some time as this band uh, has been raking this part of the coastline. And flash flood warnings are out in green boxes here from Corpus Christi and then inland from there in some of these counties in South Texas. And heavy rain will continue over the next couple of hours. We've also got tornado warnings showing up in red boxes here. Some of these little cells within this band are actually rotating uh, as the background environment favors rotating updrafts, uh, quick hitting tornadoes, short lead time. So be careful and pay attention to your emergency alerts on your phone today in South Texas as heavy rain and tornado threats continue. We're going to move on now to Tropical Storm Franklin. Uh, this continues to exist in the Central Caribbean, rather limited uh, by wind shear, continues to be fairly disorganized. Now this is the, the visible loop showing southwesterlies coming into uh, disorganized areas of deep convection on the eastern side of what appears to be the low level circulation as it were right about here it may not be technically fully closed at least not in a well-defined sense right now it's been a bit questionable in terms of uh, definitive closedness since yesterday uh, the recon planes going in there i'll see if i can get an update from the data it's uh, not yet uh, doing its leg toward the south so we won't know for a little while yet maybe after this recording whether there's actually northwesterlies on this side but either way we can tell that there's nothing under the convection on the east side and indeed this is probably about where the low level center truly is and uh, this continues to be on the western side due to generally northwesterly wind shear across the whole caribbean uh, which is continuing to push most of the thunderstorm activity off to the eastern side. And we're starting to see a little bit of a lift northward now. This whole system has come north of Aruba and is starting to make this general turn toward Hispaniola. We do see that this current spinner is moving more westward than anything, uh, but what could happen here is these spinners may get ejected, dissipate, and new ones may form beneath the thunderstorm activity continuously, which is a common pattern in sheared systems like this. So the exact track of the quote-unquote center a little questionable here, but the whole area of heavy weather will be moving north into the Dominican Republic and Haiti. And we do see, by the way, in Puerto Rico, heavy showers ongoing have been on and off for the last day or so. And we are seeing some flood advisories and potential uh, multiple inches of rain over the coming days uh, over that island. So long, wide ranging rainfall impacts from this one. This is the water vapor satellite loop. Just briefly showing here that the big trough we've been expecting to develop over the Bahamas is in fact digging in here. This is again contributing to the westerly wind shear across the Caribbean, which is keeping Franklin in check. But more importantly, this trough is uh, kind of digging down over Cuba over the next couple of days, which will start to move everything toward the north. This is helping to drag Franklin out of the Caribbean, and this will eventually end up north of the Caribbean in a couple of days or so. This is the uh, European Ensemble Mean 200 millibar flow pattern. Let me go back to the beginning here. If I scroll down really quick, you'll see where Franklin is. Again, big upper trough, and uh, this is continuing to impart westerlies over top of the system. Uh, this uh, drags Franklin north over Hispaniola, and you can see where it is by Wednesday night, early Thursday morning. This trough has now dug all the way down into the Gulf of Mexico, and you can see that there's still this belt of westerlies near and north of Franklin. This is going to be a theme for several days yet. So as Franklin crosses Hispaniola, 
it's going to remain disorganized for some time, and it could look pretty fragile here after crossing the high terrain, which would be disruptive to any low-level circulation that exists at the time of landfall. And then you can see it get right underneath this teal belt of westerlies, or west-northwesterlies, as we head into Friday. Now, eventually, what models universally agree on is that uh, little bits of troughing, weaker troughing to the north, will eventually dig down to the west of Franklin, and Franklin essentially makes its way far enough north that the wind flow kind of backs to out of the southerly or southeasterly direction, and we don't have westerlies directly over top anymore. Once that happens, shear would lower, and we would have more opportunity for a reintensification of Franklin into something more organized as this trough also starts to turn it toward the north as the southerly flow kind of ushers it uh, further to the north. And again, something to keep an eye on in Bermuda, but we're still several days away from here, and uh, whatever the track ends up looking like, it could have a wide spread uh, beyond day five. So we don't know much about the details of any possible impacts to Bermuda at this time, but that's the general expectation is this gets dragged north, turns to the right for a little bit, and then back north in a more favorable environment, and assuming it survives during the next few days, we could see an intensifying storm, maybe even a hurricane, tracking northward across the western Atlantic uh, later next week. This is the GFS Ensemble kind of illustrating that uh, uh, different members here in coloring show the intensity. So we see a generally weak system in green or blue during the first few days. And then after four days, you start to see these red and pink colors showing that intensification. Bermuda's right there for reference. And so we have a whole spread of possible tracks toward the north with a stronger system. This is the National Hurricane Center forecast track looking pretty similar to everything that we just showed, uh, bringing this northward across the Dominican Republic. Again, the exact center, not sure where that's really gonna be. Right now it appears that Franklin may be a little bit west of where they're currently analyzing it, but regardless, heavy weather over a wide area, tropical storm warnings in blue here along the southern coast of Hispaniola, watches for the northern coast in the Turks and Caicos, and rain near and east of the center, including Puerto Rico, uh, may cause flooding hazards, and especially in Hispaniola with the tall terrain, uh, heavy rain and possibility for landslides and mudslides there, so please stay safe. Again, that turn toward the east and then back north with reintensification forecast by the National Hurricane Center, going with what the consensus of models has been telling us is most likely. This does assume that Franklin survives without getting blown apart by wind shear. Uh, so far, uh, the model consensus does insist that the remnants will be able to redevelop on the other side after a few days go by. So we'll continue to keep an eye on this. Currently not a threat to the United States or the Bahamas. Uh, but the Turks and Caicos, again, could see some gusty winds and heavy rain from this. This is back to the European Ensemble mean 200 millibar plot, because I want to talk about one more area that we might have to watch in the next several days. Uh, again, this is Franklin now, and this big upper trough, as it continues to back southwestward, is going to cause something else to happen. As it digs down into the western Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, Often what occurs is this upper level trough will start to drag deep moisture northward out of the monsoonal belt of the eastern Pacific and the western Caribbean. And so if we look at the, the deep moisture plot, uh, this is the integrated vertical amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. And uh, this is Franklin, and it's kind of on the eastern end of this monsoon trough, which represents a wind shift uh, between northeasterlies to its north, southwesterlies on the south side, and this belt is going to get ushered northward by that upper level trough that I just showed you. So if I draw the monsoon trough position here and I go forward a couple days, you'll see that it starts to migrate with Franklin kind of making up the northeastern end of it. And so by the time we get to this weekend, we have it migrated all the way up here and now it's draped over the Yucatan Peninsula and we see maybe a ball of moisture that has lifted far enough north, maybe it's over water in the Western Caribbean or the Southern Gulf of Mexico, where we may have to watch for potential development. We see on the European Ensemble uh, member plot where each red number is an area of low pressure on an individual member of the ensemble, some potential for some kind of cyclogenesis to occur here in the Western Caribbean. It's not an overwhelming majority signal, more of a minority signal, and we don't really see it in other models at this time. But something to keep an eye on as the monsoon trough and its associated moisture and background rotation will be lifting north into an area where we can typically see some chances of development. Uh, the hamper or the damper on this kind of development would probably be the ushering in of dry and stable air across the Caribbean in the wake of this trough lifting northward. For example, the GFS 
tends to suppress development by transporting dry and stable air and large-scale subsidence into the Caribbean from the east behind Franklin, which is what typically happens when we get storms lifting north out of the Caribbean as we get dry and stable air behind, and that tends to suppress anything that's going on here. Uh, but we won't know for sure until we move a few days farther down the line. For now, it's not a majority expectation, but something to keep an eye on going forward next week. That's about it for today's video. It's really just Franklin remaining. Stay safe in South Texas as Harold moves inland and hopefully some beneficial rains for some if there's not too much that falls too fast. And we'll continue to watch for development as it is the peak of the hurricane season and we can't really rest for the next few weeks as it could happen around any corner. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.